Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Lively, ah. Pani yan, bro. Okay lang. All right, welcome to our uh, 4 p.m. service. Uh, look around you, look around you. All right. Makita nyo, wala nang upuan. Meron po tayong 6 p.m. na tinatawag at saka 2 p.m. All right, if you want also to be part of our, may mga kunting upuan pa tayo sa 6. I think we have uh, 200 more seats left. And in our 2 p.m. also, we have 200 seats left. So, kung gusto nyo, kasi yung 4 p.m., ito yung pinaka hindi okay na service. Eh. Hindi pa talaga kayo. Either 2 or 6. Ang 6 ang pinaka maganda. At saka 2. 2 kasi hindi ako nagpipreach doon. Kaya ang ganda talaga doon. Right? Doon yung mas malalim na teaching. No? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to Victory Green Hills. We are on our new series called Unlimited. We'll be looking for the next four weeks about biblical finance and uh, how God views money and how we need to view money in light of who God is. So, this is very interesting. And uh, we do hope that you'll enjoy this series. And... Take this home with you and apply the principles that you learn uh, for the next uh, four weeks. You know, last week, actually the series before Unlimited, yung The Ed Natin series, I think it's one of those series that is personally ministered to me as I have prepared the messages for those four weeks, especially the last one when we started talking about heaven. Just this week, we, I had a discussion with my wife. It's my wife who always starts the discussion kasi nga mas malalim siya. So, sabi niya sa akin, anong tingin mo about, you know, once we study about heaven, she realized that there are three ways people live. People live short term, some live long term, and some live with the eternal perspective in mind. And I hope when it comes to finances, ang tanong niya sa, sa akin, if you have a view of heaven, how will you teach our kids about money? Oh, it's like, oh, nice discussion. All right? You know, when it's short term, here's how we'll teach our kids. Oh, I'll give you five pesos, just be quiet. That's short term. They'll grow up thinking that money will just be, may ako, okay na gawin mo yan. Very short term. It's all about immediate, immediate, immediate results. All right? When you think long term, it means, oh, I'll teach my kids to go to the bank, we'll open an account, I'll teach them about money, I'll teach them about business, bata pa lang, papag-garage sale ko, sama ko sa tindahan, para alam niyo yung ginagawa. And then by the age of 18, 19, 20, they have their savings, and by the age of 40, 50, they're rich, they want, you know, and, and, and they could just do whatever they want. And that's long term, and it's good. I hope we're not in the short term, and I do hope most of us here would practice the long term, but something changes when we start thinking eternal, especially with money. A lot of people, when they think about money, it's always short term, and some who are financially literate, they think about long term. But what we want to do in the next four weeks is to teach you about eternal perspective about money. Kasi pag tayo, meron tayong tamang eternal perspective, lo, hindi lang long term, no, eternal yung term mo when it comes to money, you would go to the heart and the purpose of what money is all about. And you would start to see Jesus in a different light and worship Jesus in a different light because you see things now with an eternal perspective. Now, why am I saying this? Because I, na trigger to na when I remembered three years ago, I was invited in a youth group sa may Jollibee. They rented a place in Jollibee, and the topic was about money. So they invited me, and I was about to preach, and I said, before I preach, we have an activity. So there were around 40-plus kids, uh, college kids there, and they said, and, and the activity was, you go for the next 10 minutes and compose a song about money. So, ganda activity, an icebreaker. Ten minutes, they started composing songs about money, blah, 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 blah. After ten minutes, interestingly, the four groups presented. Different tone, different lyrics, same story. And here's the storyline or the lyrics of the song. Wala kaming pera, wala kaming pamasahe, hirap, hirap namin, kawawa kami, kristyano pa naman. Parang ganun yung dating. Right? Walang pambaon, basta ganun yung mga lyrics. Apat na grupo, ha? ganyan yung lyrics. Lahat sila pare-parehas yung sinasabi. Now, ang kagandaan kasi nito, on the other room na may pader lang na nagse-separate was 
a group of college kids who were into networking. Right? Alam niyo yung networking, no? So, maririnig mo yung boses nila. Umpisa pa lang, may MC na. Good morning! Pero hapon na. Parang, yung pala sa networking, laging umaga ang buhay. Okay? So, good morning! Sigawan lahat. Sino dito gustong yung maman? Para kang nasa Araneta Coliseum, oh, na may lumabas na artista. Isang milyon, isang bagsak! Dalawang milyon, dalawang bagsak! Dalawang milyon, dalawang bagsak! At tatlo. Hundred million, hundred na bagsak. Ang tagal nila. <laughs> so, habang kumakanta yung grupo na saan ako magpipreach na wala silang pera, Ito yung kabilang grupo na kumakanta, grabe, madami kaming pera sa isip namin. Yayaman din kami. I had to last minute change my message and my introduction and I went up and said, hindi nyo ba naririnig yung kabilang grupo? Say ko, nagulat lang ako dahil itong grupo na to are group of Christians. Lahat tayo dito, si Nave ni Lord Narinig nyo na yung gospel. Love na love kayo ni Lord. You're praying for lost souls. You're praying to change the world. Pero ang kanta nyo, wala kayong pera. Habang sinasabi kayo, nagsisigawan pa rin sa, ano, ilang bagsak pa! Parang gano'n. No? Tingnan nyo yung kabilang grupo. Say ko, you know what's the difference? This group talks about Jesus a lot. But they couldn't believe God for finances. And all you profess is how limited you are because you worship a God who's limited. And the other group, I don't know who they worship, but they, you could sense that in their minds and in their hearts, there's unlimited opportunities for us to get rich. Now, the two groups, different lyrics, different songs, different chantings. One is short term. Walang makita kundi wala silang pambaon hanggang paglaki. Yung isa, long term, yayaman kami, sisikat kami. Lahat ng tao bibili ng produkto namin, iinumin at papayat. Okay? Good. But the room, two rooms, had no eternal perspective about money in the 10 minutes that I heard the chanting. All right? In short, what we want to do is to focus on what's important. Especially when it comes to money. Para magbago yung mindset natin, pagdating sa pagpray natin kay God, pag humingi tayo ng pera, when we're believing God for provision, it's going to be different because we know we worship an unlimited God. But before we do that, let me read our text for today. It's six verses. It's found in 1 Kings 17, verse 1 to 6. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn it there. Right? It's better if you could bring your Bible with you. Right? Parang hindi gumagan, gumagana yung clicker ko. Kayo na lang, okay? 1 Kings 17, verse 1 to 6. Now, Elijah the Tishbite, okay, from, uh, bro, pa, paayos na lang. Kailangan ko ito mamaya. Okay. From Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, not days, ha, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here and turn eastward and hide in the Kerit Ravine east of the Jordan. Okay, next. Okay. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kerit Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread from meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would speak to us through these verses. Lord, that we would start to see with new eyes who our God is and why we worship this God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, 1 Kings 17 was the first time Elijah was mentioned. And Elijah was mentioned out of the blue. As in, there was no Elijah mentioned anywhere else. And then he comes out. He's already a prophet here. And then he makes a declaration. The first declaration he has ever made in Scripture that was recorded, he said, as, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve. Alam mo tong declaration niya to, sobrang lakas nito. Because at that time, may kalaban si God na wina-worship ng tao. And that God was named Baal. Baal is the God of fertility. Kung gusto mong mabuntis, 
worship Baal, and he's the god of rain clouds. In short, kung hindi na umuulan, lumalabas na yung mga propeta ni Baal, tapos nag, nag-rain dance na sila with Sarah G. Okay? So, uh, alam nyo, ha? Okay? Napanood ko rin yun. Okay. So, that was Baal. They were worshiping this god who they thought would bring them blessing. And here comes Elijah declaring to the whole world, as long as I live and my God lives, this is the God whom I will serve. It was a very strong statement. Elijah was declaring, God is my king, my source is God, God is my life, and since He is His life, as long as I live, I will serve Him. Not idols, not Baal, not money, I'll serve God. And you know, there's a tension for everybody in this room, whether we serve money or we serve God. Kasi mabilis sabihin minsan, pag lalo na pag wala tayong pera, no? I worship God, I love God, I pray to Jesus. Right? Pero pagka nagkakaroon na tayo ng pera at may blessings na, minsan yung blessings pa yung yung nagsishift sa atin na imbis na si God na yung worship natin, makita mo wala ka ng oras kay God. Iba na yung nagko-consume sa'yo. You've made it already. And so now, instead of worshiping God, we worship money. Right? Yan yung sinasabi nilang ano, di ba? Uh, you hear people say, di ba? Ay, yung iba-ibang just naman yan, it all leads to one. Yeah? And there's quite a truth in that, not in terms of salvation, but a lot of people, whether Christian or non-Christian, okay, they would worship God. A lot of people, and this is our natural uh, fallen human condition, Okay? that we worship gods so that we could all get the blessing. We grew up like that. I am a born-again Roman Catholic Buddhist. Okay? In short, everything just to get the blessing. Right? You go through great lengths so that you would be blessed. Kailangan natin mag-pray dito para pagpalain tayo. Ngayon, naging born again ka na. Nagbago na. Mag-church ako para ma-bless ako. Okay? Pero pag hindi mo ginawang spiritual yon, punta ako church para mabigyan ako ng pera ni Lord. Para ma-advance yung karir ko. Kaya ako wini-worship si Lord. In the end, a lot of people in their natural tendency, they worship God or gods to get their ultimate God, which is money. Kaya nga, si Jesus... So many times he talks about money because he knows this is a major, major struggle of every man. Does he worship God or does he worship money? Does he worship Jesus with his money or does he worship Jesus to get money? Right? Do we worship Jesus to get our idols or not? And for Elijah, declaring this was drawing the line and saying, as for me, I'm not serving Baal I'm not serving these things, but I'm serving the God and the God of Scripture, the God of Israel. Lagi ko narinig ni King, kay Chinky, no, na meron ba kayong kaibigan na nung wala pang pera, sobrang humble, sobrang bait, tapos nung nagka-pera, eh, nagiging ano? Nagiging mayabang? Di ba? Meron ba kayong ganong kaibigan? Ganon ba kayo? Alright? Di ba? Sabi ni Chinky, actually, dati hindi naman sila hindi naman sila humble. Mayabang na talaga mga yan. Lumabas lang nung may pera na. Right? It's true. Parang yung pera at saka yung weight the same. Ah, marami akong friends overweight, no? Tulad ko. Okay. So, alam mo yung mga overweight na tao, di ba? Lalo na sa studies, pag overweight ka, low ang self-esteem mo. Eh, makita mo pag marami overweight naglalakad ba? nakatingin sa baba. Hindi dahil hindi nila kaya, dahil ang taba na ng ano. Hindi. It's not. Alright? It's because they think they're fat and they're not worthy and they have no value. So they, most of my friends, okay? even I one time, I was like that. Alright? Kasi nga, laki mo. Nakakaya. Para akong wala akong masuot. Di ba? Tapos natutuwa lang kayo pag kumakain na kayo. Di ba? Order kayo na order. Tumataas self-esteem mo nung kumakain ka na. Di ba? Kapal mo ba? Diet ko. <laughs> di ba? Parang... <laughs> <laughs> wow, ha? nakatulong. Ha? <laughs> Buffet, tas diet ko. Okay, no? okay, ano yan? Okay. Pampapayat. Okay, so, pero ano nangyari? Almost half of my friends na overweight, anong pumayat, nag-iba. Grabe. Nakataas yung, ano, yeah, medyo lagi nag-ano, tumitingin sa akin, stare down at me. 
Taba mo naman. Huh? Yeah. Suot nila yung mga fit na sobra. Alam mo fit? Yung alam mong large siya pero naka-XS siya. Para labas talaga. Tapos ginaganong-ganon niya ito. <laughs> yeah. Anong nagbago? Walang nagbago. Mayabang na talaga yun. Nakatago lang sa Cebu dati. Okay. <laughs> Ganon din pagdating sa pera. Okay? Ganon din yun. Ibig sabihin, lumalabas lang talaga yung true colors natin. Why? Because people's natural tendency is really to worship a god or gods to get their ultimate god, which is mammon or money. And so, Elijah, Elijah makes this declaration early on. In Matthew 6.24, it says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, why, why am I sharing this? Okay. I want to lay a foundation early on. Kasi pag nakakarinig tayo ng mga series na ganun, ako, unlimited, ako, pera na naman yan. Yes, come on, Lord, worship ako. Atin ko talaga to, hindi ako mag absent for the next four weeks because blessing will come, money will come. Come on, money, come. Hallelujah! Guma, lumalabas yung pagka-Pentecostal mo, pagka mga ganitong mga, mga ano. Dito mo makikita eh kung ano vina-value mo. Yeah? Kaya ako gusto ilay mo na yung foundation para lahat tayo grounded tayo kung ano talaga tingin ni Lord pagdating dito. Minsan kitang-kita yan eh kung anong value ng, lalo na pagka mga Christian, no? pag may prayer meeting. Let's pray for donations. Lord, we pray for Mongolia, we pray for China, Lord. We pray that. In Jesus' name, now let's pray for a financial breakthrough. It just shows something. It shows what we really value. And a lot of times we come to God in prayer to just get what we want and not really to know God and not really to worship God. And here's unlimited principle number one if you want to live a life when we're worshiping Jesus and not money. It's this, no one can serve two masters. You choose one. Choose today whom you will serve, money or God. And I've seen well-meaning Christians who started out right. I came here to worship God. And then later when the blessings come, busy na ako eh. Wala na akong oras kay Lord eh. Sikat na ako eh. Yeah. Okay na, may negosyo ko. Grabe, sobrang busy. Nag-expand kami eh. Ang una natin tinatanggal yung worship natin kay Lord. Una natin tinatanggal prayer natin reading of our Bible. Why? Because it just shows what's really in our heart. All right? No one can serve two masters. In Luke 12, 15, it says, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of what? Green. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. You know, this is so true for me. Sabi, sabi ni, ano, ni, ni Luke, Ingat kayo, huh, mga brothers and sisters. Be on your guard against greed. Greed, dahil feeling mo, dahil marami ka ngayong possessions, iba yung identity mo. Nawawala na, hindi na kay Christ, nasa pera na. Watch out for that. Watch out for greed. You know, when I was single, I, I've been working no, as a working student and go to Divisoria. Alam nyo naman na yung kwento ko, no? And for three years, no, I worked really hard. I did the long-term planning. I go to La Salle, then I go and work because I want to earn, I want to have a good house, a good, a nice car, and everything. Long-term thinking. Something happened. Okay, in, in, while, while I was working, a friend, uh, somebody approached and said, Dennis, may maganda akong investment. Bigay ka dito, you'll receive 2% a month. So, nakita mo na yung mata, ching, 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 nagkakalculate na yung utak mo. Oh. 2% a month. A time deposit is 2% per annum. Ito, 2% per month. Lucky nito ah. Grabe. So, 100,000, 2,000, 1 million, ganyan. Pag nag 1 million ako, every month may datanggap akong ganyan. So, sabi ko, okay to, okay to. Lagay ako pera. I gave around 20% of my money from the start, on the start. Dating yung check, tuwan-tuwa ako. Yes. Grabe to, wala akong ginagawa. May perang dumarating. Ito yung tinatawag nilang passive income. Kasi nakaganoon lang ako may perang dumarating. It's very, very passive. Okay? I don't need to work. Okay? So, from 20, naging 30%, 40%, 50%. After almost two years, I gave 80% of my money 
to this investment. And after two, three months, the guy said, came back to me and said, natakbuhan tayo. And it was true, natakbuhan. Isha lalo. Kawawa rin siya. Pero, but niya kinuha pera? Anyway, di ba? So, parang at that time, parang, wow. Isipin mo yon. Three years of your work, gone. And it was God saying something to me and teaching me a valuable lesson about prosperity. He was saying, now Dennis, whom are you serving? God or money? Nalala ko, hindi naman ako masyado umiyak nun. Kasi may tears na konti. Pero parang, oh, I learned my lesson. It was a big, expensive lesson. Right? But it changed. Now, I realized, wow, greed would just put you down. Greed would say, it's never enough. Greed would say, you've got to continue to get more and hoard more so that you would have an abundance of possession. And I lost everything. Christians should know that everything we have comes from God and belongs to God or else it will be limited. Kaya nung sabi, sabi ni God, kini yung pera yan, sa akin or sa'yo? Kung sa akin talaga yan, ba't hindi mo ako in-inquire bago ka mag-invest? Bigay ka ng bigay because greed is running you already. You see, if everything is from God, it means He owns everything and I borrow and use it. Ang ganda nung setup, di ba? He says, my son, Dennis, I own everything. You use what you want. Okay? Just return it to me because that's mine. Kaya unlimited. Pero pag ikaw, gusto mo sa'yo yan, hindi akin to. God, ito sa'yo. Bigay ko to sa'yo, 10%. Bigay. Yan sa'yo. 90, akin to. Yung negosyo ko, akin yan. Ha? Kotse ko, akin yan. Asawa ko, akin yan. Biyanan, oh, yan, sa'yo na yan. Lord. Ah, tatayth ko na yan. Okay. Di ba? Ang prob... Hindi, oy, mga biyanan dito, ah. Love ko lahat ng biyanan. Okay. Okay. Totoo, okay. Love na love ko, biyanan ko. Okay. Biyanan ko. Ewan ko biyanan nyo. Okay. Biyanan ko, sure ako. Okay. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw, yung iniisip mo palagi, akin to, ah. Lord, ito sa'yo, kundi. Pero akin to. Ano sabi mo? I'm trusting in my limited resources. Sipin mo, pag sinabi ko, Lord, akin to, ah. Di na ako magbibigay sa'yo, Lord. Ah. Binigay ko na buhay at karir ko sa'yo. Pastor na ako ngayon. I won't even give to you. Why? I gave everything already. This is mine. What in the world am I thinking? Right? Will I get rich with what I have now? No. It's so limited. Isang aksidente, isang sakit, ubus lahat yan. Sasapang, sapang ka pala. Akin to, pinagirapan ko to, pawis ko to. Hindi mo pawis yan. Si Lord ang gumawa ng pawis mo. Sa kanya din yan. Everything God owns. But if you're saying, God, everything is yours. I just borrow. I'm just a steward of what you own. Then your life becomes unlimited. When you pray, it's different. It's no longer, Lord, Lord, we're praying for a house. Lord, alam ko, 30,000 lang. Kinikita ko every month, Lord, 30,000. Hindi ko alam paano gagawin, Lord. Pero bigyan mo ako ng bahay na 1 million pesos. Bakit? Kasi ang prayer mo, feeling mo sa'yo yung pera. Kaya yung prayer mo, liliit. Bakit? Dito lang. Ito lang yung pwede kong i-work with eh. Ito lang yung binigay sa akin ni Lord. Pero pag alam mo, God owns everything, you ask differently. You're saying, God, I don't know how to get that, but by your grace, by faith, Lord, provide for my needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Ibang iba, right? It's different because you have an unlimited God. Okay? He owns it, we use it. Sabi ni C.S. Lewis, He who is God and everything has no more than he who has God alone. This is so true, right? I know some of us might not understand this statement, but this is so true in my life. He who has God and has riches, pantay ka lang sa isang taong walang pera, pero may Diyos. Really, the same. If you look at it, we're all the same here. The one that provides for us, the one who gives us the ability to produce wealth is actually God. So there's no question, there's no debate about it. You see, none of us can dethrone the true God unless in the process we dethrone our other gods. 
Sabi mo, I worship Jesus. If you're really saying you worship Jesus, then it means you got to dethrone the other gods of your life. That includes money, your goals, and your ambition. I'm not saying don't have goals and ambition, but I'm saying you do all these things for the glory of God. You use all these things to worship Jesus and not worship Jesus to get all of these things. Right? It's different. There is a powerful relationship between our true spiritual condition and our attitude and actions concerning money and possession. Diyan mo makikita yung maturity ng isang tao. How does he handle money? How does he make financial decision? Because every financial decision is a spiritual decision. It's a reflection of your walk with God. No one can serve two masters. You either serve one or the other. Now, next, no? Sabi ni Elijah, now, there will be no rain for many years. There will be neither dew nor rain except at my word. Once again, this is such a powerful phrase. What Elijah was saying, it doesn't matter what season, dry season, wet season, harvest, planting, if God decrees something, the seasons cannot stop it. In short, if everybody's saying, Nako, December, wala na tayong negosyo, lahat. Nagsya-shopping, so yung negosyo ko, wala. You're standing on the word of the economy or of, of the other people and you're not standing on the word of God. When God says something, you've got to stand on that word. Let me give you an example. Once again, sa Chinese culture kasi, alam niyo ba Chinese ako? Alam ko, hindi alata, malaki mata ko, no? <laughs> yun na yung pinakamalaki ko. Pag August, lagi naming sinasabi, ah, nako August, patay negosyo. Ghost month. August is ghost month for Chinese. It means all businesses are not good. Nobody's buying, nobody's selling. It's bad. Okay? And in our business, in our textile business, it was the same. Every time it's August, it's ghost month. That's why makikita mo yung mga Chinese restaurant pag August, naglalabasan ng eat all you can sa Gloria Maris, 50% dim sum, ha? mga insider tip, no? August, mag-schedule na kayo. Okay? Ibig, kasi August, ghost month daw yan. Walang, hindi maganda magnegosyo. Liit na mata, liit pa kita. Ha? Parang ganun yung August. And I would remember, even in our business, we would even declare, nako, August na. Nako, logi na tayo. Nako, walang negosyo. Hirap to. Same working hours, but different results. And we would declare that. Sa mga sama yung mga small group ng mga Chinese, Oh, kawawa ka. Ikaw lugi ngayong buwan. Lahat lugi. But something has to shift. When we became Christians, we should not stand on the word of men and the traditions of men. We have to stand on the word of God. God says He will provide. God says, if you obey my commands, I will, I will bless you. Okay? Your vats will overflow. And so we have to stand on that word. It means I could not confess it anymore. Why? Because the word of God says something different. And I have to stand on the word of God. So kung lahat sila lugi, ako hindi ako lugi. Ako kikita ako. Bakit? Hindi dahil magaling ako, pero because that's what the word of God says. There's grace for me to do business. You go back to your own workplace, nasa sales ka, lahat ang sasabi, nako sales, nako, mga condo, real estate, walang bumibili pag December, ganyan, ganyan. Huwag kayong nasa office, tas nakikiano ka rin, unga, unga, unga. Okay? Huwag kang unga ng unga, okay? <laughs> Pang mga unggoy lang yun, di ba? Baboy ba yun o unggoy? Hakalabaw. Ha? Baka. Sigurado ba kayo o baka lang? Okay, okay. Ibig sabihin, you don't do that. Okay? You just confess the Word of God. They might say, my colleagues might say, okay, it's a dry season for you. It will never be dry season for me by faith. Why? Because I know my God is unlimited. I know my God can provide. He just needs to decree it and it will happen. Okay? You've got to trust that God is a miracle-working God. Kaya kami, hindi kami ghost month sa August. Holy ghost month kami. Okay? Sa Holy Spirit kami. Okay? Hindi kami sa demonic spirits. Naniniwala. Elijah declared no rain except at his word. It was a challenge to the false god of Baal that says there will be no rain. Look at your god, Baal. He cannot provide rain 
during times of drought, but my God can provide if He says it. Kaya nga minsan yung tayo, no, may fascination tayo sa mga uh, feng shui and ano, yeah, hindi ka naman Chinese, nagpo-feng shui ka. Diba? Alam mo, lumaki kaming feng shui, sobrang feng shui, yung bahay namin naka-feng shui, lahat naka-feng shui. Kaya ganito itsura namin. Eh. Okay? So, position ng ganyan, dapat ganyan. May swimming pool kami dati, tinambakan. Bakit? Malas daw yung swimming pool. Sige ko, nako, bakit? Feng shui eh. Pagpasok mo ng kwarto, dapat pagpasok mo, wala yung kubeta sa harapan. Bakit? Mabaho daw. So, hindi ko alam. Okay. Basta lahat yun. Ipoposition mo, sisirain mo yung bahay, para rearrange mo, para raw maganda yung flow. Okay. Eh, minsan, ang problema pa niyan, iba-ibang expert, iba-iba sinasabi. In short, baka hindi nila alam ano sinasabi nila. It's so complicated. Actually, if you study it, it's so complicated. Di ba? So, word ni God, simple. I will provide. I can do all things through Christ. You know, it's so simple. Right? But, pero, pagka, pero na yung winner worship mo, nagiging komplikado. Yung iba naman, di ba? Manguhula, fortune telling, gusto mong gusto pumunta. Anong sinasabi ng bolang kristal, di ba? Ang problema dito, may dalawang klaseng manguhula eh. Yung isang, oh, focus-focus lang, yung mga panguhula niya, palaging ano, ngayong taon. Magkakasakit ka. <gasps> eh, lagi ka naman nagkakasakit every year, di ba? So, minsan may mga ganun, pero may mga manghula na talagang demonic. As in, alam nila. Okay? May demon na assigned. Yeah? So, that's why they could say it. That's why God was saying, where are you, whom will you serve? Kaya nga sabi ko, nung sinabi ni Elisha noon, mabigat yun. Sinabi niya sa mo, no, I'm serving my God. My culture say, go to the fortune teller, go to the horoscope. I'm not going there. I'm not basing my life and destiny on those things. I'm basing it to the one who created the stars and not on the stars. You understand? And so, sometimes we go there, di ba? Or minsan yung mga, yung mga nilalagay natin sa tindahan, may, may palaka ka, di ba? Meron kang pusang sumasayaw, call me maybe, di ba? Parang ganyan. So, ang dami mong nilalagay, yung octagon and all, and all these things, and we think, Pag nilagay ko to, ayos tayo. Well, some people would ask, so totoo ba na pag nag-feng shui ka, naglagay ka ng ganun, mabibless ka? Etong sagot ko, no? personal opinion, I think it does work. Really does. Why? Because there's demonic spirits in it. But, remember this, there's always a payoff. You do things like that, there's always a payoff. I've got two stories, recent stories. There's a couple who goes to our victory group. And they're business people. They're rich. And there was a time that there was drought in their business, so they asked a feng shui expert to come. They're professing uh, feng shui Christians, no? Okay. <laughs> I don't know who they worship, okay? And so, pinabago nila, may nilagay sila sa bahay nila, and the business started flourishing. But here was the payoff. For two months, unexplained, their kids got sick. Two months, non-stop sickness. So we didn't know this was happening. So they went to our victory group and said, Uy, pag-pray niyo yung mga anak namin, ay a month plus na may sakit. Hindi namin alam bakit nga ganun. So tingin mo, bakit? Tapos sabi niya, ay, naalala ko. And alam niya to kasi nagbabasa to ng Bible. Two months ago, nag nag kami sa bahay. So, in-arrange namin, inayos namin. So, tingin mo, doon, sabi ko, duh, okay. Sige. malamang, okay. Go home and take it out. Right? They went home, the next day, took out everything. I'm telling you, in just a day, everybody got healed. Sickness was gone. So they were thanking us. Wow, o nga, no? dapat talaga, hindi kami, hindi kami nagtatrust dyan sa feng shui. Dapat kay Lord kami nagtatrust. And they learned their lesson for six months. And after six months, they did it again. Oops. Okay. And once again, the same sickness and calamity happens to their family. Why? Once again, the mindset was, I worship God to get my ultimate idol, which is money. You cannot serve both masters. You have to choose. Choose today whom you will serve. Assess nyo, honestly. Sino-sino serve nyo? 
Ano yung tumatakbo lagi sa utak nyo? What consumes you? Is it Jesus or is it money? When your schedule would reflect what you really value in life. It's so simple. There's always a payoff if you worship money. It boils down to who you are worshiping and why. Right? So now, that's my intro. Now, let me get to the message. Right? That's the foundation for the next four weeks. Ask yourself the question, who are you really serving? So God did something to Elijah. God instructs Elijah to go east. Sabi niya, Elijah, you go east, young man. Now, there was a problem with that command. Because if he goes east, during the time, the place where he was asked to go, yung east was a very problematic place. Una-una, if it's in season, there's not a lot of food. And now there's drought and famine, of course there will be no food. And God tells Elijah to go east. Yung West naman, yan yung, yan yung mga progressive, may tanim, the soil is healthy. And God tells Elijah, Elijah, you go East, don't go West. Ito yung mga ngayon, pag, Lord, gusto ko mag-start ng negosyo. Saan ba? Green Hills o West Crame? Yeah. West Crame, pare. Ha? Huh? West Crame? Anong gagawin ko doon? Magtayo ka ng mall doon. Ha? Huh? Yeah. You don't know why. But God instructs Elijah to do something that doesn't make any business sense. Go to the east. Don't go west. West was harvest and west was provision. East was desolation. What is God telling us here? It says that when God tells us to go somewhere, no matter how desolate the place, He will provide. God will provide. You know, Elijah drank from the brook in the midst of famine, there is water provided for by Elijah. Walang reina for years, pero may tubig yung brook. Yung streams, yan may tubig yan. Yung brook, yan yung nagda-dry up. Yan yung mga nakikita natin minsan na may tulay. May tulay, pagtingin mo sa tulay, wala naman tubig. Those are brooks. Okay? Ibig sabihin, wala masyadong life on. Kaya nag, pag malakas yung araw, nagda-dry up yung brook. And there was water in the brook where he was drinking. You would really never know. How God will provide for you if He tells you to go somewhere and it doesn't make sense, obey, follow. I was working for the family and then decided to go into full-time ministry. And so, the first almost four years of my ministry, I had no salary. Right? It, was, it was really faith-stretching. And I remember the first few months, um, I was a campus worker and I had to go and talk to people to help uh, support me financially. And so I made a list of all the rich uncles that I know. Ay, itong si uncle ganyan, itong si uncle ganyan. Sure shot to. First call I made. Yaman, may fast food, ganyan, franchise. Ganyan. You know, I'm entering into ministry and I'm leaving my career. Can you please support me? And he says, no. Ha? Kung si uncle na mahal si Lord would not support me, who will support me? Another one, talk to another businessman, lives in a very exclusive village, ang laki ng bahay. Sabi ko, wow, sure shot. To, sure shot. I went inside, presented my ministry, and they said, we'll think about it and we'll call you back. And up until now, every morning, I look at my cell phone, they haven't called back. <laughs> Another businessman, sabi ko, ito na, ito to, ito to. Looks at me and said, di ba your parents are rich? Why would I give you money? Nagalitan pa ako. <laughs> Hindi rin nagbigay. But you know what? God really moves in amazing ways. In unlikely manner, I would talk to someone who has a 9 to 5 job, not really having a large salary, looks at me and says, Dennis, I really love to support you. Here's 3,000 a month. I want to pledge 3,000. Para, minsan pa, na, napapa, bibigay ka 3,000. Alam mo ba, magkano sweldo mo? Did I hear you right? 3,000 a month. Yes. And they were faithful till the end that I was raising my support. You would never know how God would move. You know, the number one problem we have with financial breakthrough, it's our job and our salary. Because we think our job and our salary is our main provision. 
It's not. God is your provider. Not your salary. Not your business. Minsan binabax natin si Lord, nako, basta sa negosyo ko lang. Pag itong negosyo ko namatay, patay din ako. Hindi totoo yan. Binabax mo si Lord, eh, feeling mo pera, darating lang sa negosyo mo. Pwedeng dumating sa ibang paraan yan. Right? And that's why it's the number one hindrance for a lot of Christians today. Because you just look at your salary and say, this is how God will provide for me. My salary. Sino sa inyo dito yung salary nyo? Yayaman talaga kayo. Taas ang kamay. Yayaman ba kayo sa salary nyo? Yes or no? Huh? Audience participation. Pwede po magsalita. Okay. Yayaman kayo o hindi? Oh, ba't kayo nandoon? Hindi, lang lang. Okay. Yun yung sinasabi ko. Baka hindi tayo yumaman doon, pero wag mong babak si Lord na doon lang darating yung pera. Hindi. Jay, pwede kang mag-asawa ng milyonaryong babae. Hindi. Hindi, lang lang. Okay. Ikaw daw ng trabaho. Okay? In short, you cannot box and limit God. God can work in other ways. You've got to trust Jesus. And I believe here's the reason why I had a hard time in my first few weeks talking to people. It was because God was teaching me a lesson. He was cutting my dependency on my logic. Alam mo, tumanda ako, well provided. Coincidence to, no? Pangalan ng tatay ko, Jesus. Alam nyo naman yun. Yeah. Jesus provided for me. Okay. <laughs> Grabe yung provision ni Jesus sa akin. For 24 years, di niya ako iniwan. Maong ko, toothbrush ko, shampoo ko, si Jesus nagbibigay lahat. Okay. Totoo yan. Okay. Pero, nung sinabi ko magiging pastor na ako, sabi ni Jesus, I will leave you and I will forsake you. So, <laughs> Ibig sabihin, wala raw siyang bibigay na pera sa akin. Si Lord, ang boss mo. Let God give you your salary. So, ko, sige. Kuripot. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Si Jesus. God was saying, don't look to the earthly Jesus. Look to Jesus. Okay? Look to your Jesus who will provide for you. It was hard. It was like cutting off. Para akong tinanggal sa mafia. Yeah. Wala na yan. Wala ka na sa payong ng organisasyon natin. Na kay Lord ka na. It was hard. But I knew I had to go through this so that I could worship Jesus and not worship other gods to get money. God was teaching me, go to your source. Here's principle number two. God is able to provide in the most unexpected place and unlikely manner. Grame. Alam nyo, gugulatin kayo ni Lord. Mga iba dito, di ba? Sino mga magpapakasal dito? Yeah. Ayun, no? JR, di ba, nakakakalbo, no? Yeah. Isang araw lang, ganun yung gagastusin natin, no? Mahal. Alam niyo ba, mahal magpakasal? Kaya you call it mahal. <laughs> yeah. Kaya yung mga wedding, mahal na mahal kita. Okay. May ibig sabihin yun. Okay. And it's expensive to start a family today. And even with the temptation to keep up with your friends, right? Just the temptation. Ang hirap. But you know what? God would provide in the most unexpected place in an unlikely manner. In 1 Kings 17, 4, it says, You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. You know what ravens are? Ravens are like black ano, crows, na mas malaki sa crow. Okay? And may picture ako ng raven. No? Uh, and God used ravens. And he, here's, here's the thing about ravens. Ang ravens is one of the most selfish bird ever made. It means it won't deliver food, it would eat the food. And God says, Elijah, you go east. Wala kasing pera doon. Doon ka. Papakainin kita doon. And not only that, but I would ask a selfish bird to deliver food for you every day. Ginugal ko tong raven, no? hindi, hindi pala ganyan yung itsura niya. Medyo ganito yung itsura ng raven. Right? So, <laughs> Yan yung mas accurate version, no? Pumuputok pa yan, okay? But, <laughs> imagine mo, sa lahat ng ibon na pwedeng padala ni Lord, di ba? Pwedeng kalapate, 
Sarap tun ko ni mo tas iniihaw mo. Lagyan mo ng chicharon. Oh, you have a Chinese food already. Okay. He uses a raven to provide for Elijah. He uses a selfish, dirty bird. A raven was a dirty bird during the time. It was an unclean animal. And God would use that to provide for His people. Imagine how God can move in mysterious ways. And here's principle number four. Three, sorry. God is able to provide in the most extravagant measure. Yeah. You've got to believe me here. In 1 Kings seventeen six, it says, The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Imagine mo yan. He was in the east. It was a desolate place. God uses a raven. I don't know where you are now. You might be in the east where there's no opportunity. And God uses a raven to deliver bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. Nakaupo ka, may ibon na lumilipad. Goes to you with Pande Manila. Tapos hindi keso, ha? Spam. Natostado. <laughs> Sarap. Okay. And he would deliver that morning and evening. On the dot. Gutom na ako. The food just comes. And there's water in the brook that was supposed to be dry. God can provide for you in extravagant measure. God, you know, minsan kasi tayo pag magpray tayo, parang palaging ano lang, Lord, bigay mo yung tama lang. Lord, masaya na ako dito. Okay na to, Lord. Okay na, okay na. Maling prayer yun eh. Because our God is an unlimited God. Kasi if your prayer is always just yung sakto, Pilipino, mahilig sa sakto eh. Tayo lang yung may coke sakto. Di ba? Dahil sakto, anong mentality mo? Akin to, sakto lang to, sakto. Di ba? Kung may missionary dumating, di mo mabigay kasi gusto kita bigyan, pero sakto lang to. Di ba? Bakit? Prayer mo lagi, sakto lang. Lord, basta mabuhay lang. Lord, bigyan mo lang ako three meals a day. Lord, bigyan mo na ako kahit, kahit third hand car na. Basta gumagalaw. Basta may pintuan. Di ba? Yung prayer natin minsan, ganun eh. Parang limited si God. You've got to think unlimited. Why? God owns everything and He's allowing us to be stewards of the blessing. And that is to change you. Because you know you're tapping on to unlimited resources. And God gave that to Elijah with ravens feeding him morning and evening. You know, I rarely share this story. I just share this every time sa Victory Weekend. Uh, and during my, our first year of marriage, uh, we had our honeymoon in, in Singapore. We were blessed with the Singapore honeymoon. Like Star Cruise kami. Kasi uh, we were so inspired with the movie of Aga and Christine Hermosa. Because when we saw the movie, I go, Fami, you look like Christine. I look like Aga. <laughs> Maaga. Mulak. Okay? And so, let's go there. Let's reenact the scene. Basta I won't die. Okay? And so, we were in Star Cruise. We were eating, enjoying our... Uh, our honeymoon, and then during one of our eating time, I think it was dinner, we, we asked the question, what's your dream honeymoon? And so sabi ko, sabay natin sabihin na, one, two, three, Europe! Same time, Europe! Europe! Wow, Europe! And alam mo yun, yung nandoon kayo, tas you're newly married, kinikilig kayo sa isit, isa, oh, Europe! <laughs> We're so in love, it's the same! <laughs> yeah! So, gigil na gigil. Ah! Alam mo, Tami, promise ko sa'yo. Ito yung mga promise na kala mong kayang-kaya. No? On our 25th wedding anniversary, pupunta tayong Europe. Magsasave ako 2-3,000 a month for 25 years para maka-Europe tayo. Sabi ko, just in case 25 years from now, hindi umabot, mag-Singapore tayo to swimming tayo to Europe. Okay? Basta we'll go there. Okay? So kami, tuwan-tuwa kami, wow, pray natin yan. Let's believe God for it. Yeah, 25th wedding anniversary. That would be like a grand celebration for us. After a Singapore cruise, we went home. And it just 
that first year of our marriage, we received a call. And a friend called me, part of our victory group. That's why, you know, mag-victory group talaga kayo, okay? <laughs> Yung iba, ayaw nyo pa mag-victory group. Yeah. Sabi niya, uh, Dennis, nanalo ako ng raffle. 10-day Europe cruise. So, wow, happy for you. And then, may problema. I, I cannot go and my parents cannot. And naisip namin, ibigay sa inyo ni Tami. Wow. Pero may problema. Major problem. Two months pregnant si Tami noon, bedrest siya. Naalala ko pa noon, nandun kami sa room namin. Sabi ko, sandali, tatanungin ko misis ko. So, sabi ko, Tami, tumawag si ano? Binibigyan tayo ng 10 days Europe cruise. Paano yan? Biglang tumayo si Tami. Sabi niya, oh, okay na yan. <laughs> Nawala yung spotting. Parang, wow, magaling ka pala. Nagpapanggap ka lang. <laughs> So, to make the long story short, we went to Europe. Our first stop, we went to six countries in Europe. On our first year, it was God saying, mm, 25, 25 years, pag gusto kong bigay sa'yo ngayon, may angal ka, wala po, wala po. <laughs> really, God was showing us, I can provide for you. I know you don't have money for this, but I'm providing for you. Diba? We were in London airport, and the immigration officer Siyempre, you have to pass that or else you're deported, right? Looks at us. Looks at our paper and says this. Sir, I have a funny question. Karabi, kinakabahan na ako. Ko, I hope it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at our paper. She looks at our paper. And here's the problem with our paper. Name, Dennis C. Occupation Pastor. Salary. Certain amount that was so small that I couldn't even afford an Asia tour. Wife, Samantha C., occupation, none, salary, not applicable. <laughs> wow, ha? maglo-London kayo, ha? So, Sammy, I have a funny question. She said, how can you afford all of this? Sabi ko, why? You don't know me. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hindi ko sinabi yun. Okay. We, showed our <laughs> we showed our papers. And said, you know, it is a gift. We won a raffle, and so we're here. And they let us pass. Alam mo nung naka, nakalampas kami sa immigration, gusto ko na halikan talaga yung floor ng Europe, pero it's dirty. <laughs> but I wanted to. Okay. I remember, we're almost always teary-eyed on the first days that we were there. Sa balcony kami, sa cruise, sobrang lamig, hindi pwedeng holding hands, nakayakap. Sinisimot namin yung hangin ng euro. Parang... <laughs> eh, minsan di pa enough eh. <gasps> Gusto mong i-take home? Alam mo, minsan kumakain kami, tapos nagtititig lang kami, teary-eyed. Sa euro ba talaga tayo? So, pa ni Lord sa atin. And we went to, uh, we went to, this is uh, some of our pictures, you know. And we went to Spain. Uh, this is Spain. We went to Spain, Portugal, France, and London, Spain, Portugal, France, uh, Guernsey, and there's another. Nakalimutan ko na. There's so many, I forgot. Alam mo yun, nasa Spain ka, parang, nasa Spain tayo. Totoo ba to? Yeah. So, gumawa, grabe talaga yung bait ni Lord sa amin. Punta kami Portugal, punta kami umiinom kami ng Portugal coffee, ganyan. Parang, are we really here? Some other pictures. This is in London, and this is our backyard now, okay? That's the Buckingham Palace, okay? So parang, wow, punta pa tayo dito. Nagkita pa kami nila Prince Charles. Sa picture, okay? And it was just amazing. Naalala ko pa, I gained 10 pounds in 10 days. Imagine, because the food was unlimited. I, pag nag-cruise, yung mga magahani mo dito, mag-cruise kayo kung may pera kayo. Hingi kayo kay Lord. Alam mo, gagawin mo sa cruise, lakad ka. 24 hours lahat ang restaurant doon eh. Maglakad mo, pasok ka, kain ka. After mo kain, oh, busog na tayo. Lakad muna tayo sa balcony. Lakad kami ng ilang meters. Uy, nakakapagod pala maglakad ha. Kain ulit tayo. Okay, kakain na naman kami. Tapos, okay, saan pa ba tayo pwede? Punta ulit tayo sa kwarto. Punta lang kami sa kwarto. Manonood kami TV. Eh, pag inaangat mo yung remote, nakakapagod pala yun. Sana kain ulit tayo. Kabagod. 
Grabe. Sabi ko, Lord, sobrang bait mo talaga. It just shows to you, when we went there, we had no money. You know, they had the captain's night. You have to wear your uh, Americana, your suit, your coat and tie. And then 95% of the people there were white Americans or Europeans. And the conversation in our table was, what cruise did you attend? What's nice about that cruise? So, as in talagang payabangan, as in ang, <laughs> ang hangin talaga doon. Parang, <laughs> eh kami lang yung dalawang bata doon na, na itim yung buhok. They look at us and say, how about you? What cruise have you attended? Uh, Tom Cruise, there's a cruise. <laughs> Star Cruise. <laughs> star Cruise? What's Star Cruise? Star Cruise, Star Cruise, kumukha mo. Grabe, sabi ko, pang mayayaman lang to. And we felt really the favor and the blessing of God when we were there. It was amazing. At the end of the day, here's my main point. Right? God is a God who provides. Unlikely manner, unexpected manner, unlikely place, in extravagant measure, he can... I'm sorry, yan yung ano, hindi to lunch buffet, ha? merienda, a cake, and sweets buffet to. Alright? Sipin mo, after mo mag-lunch, in two hours, may nakasetup na ganyan. Hindi parang, ano, swimming na tayo sa sugar! Okay. Walang sugar free doon. Free sugar lahat yan. Okay? And it is really God who provides for everything. God is a God who provides. God is faithful. All you need to do, really, it goes back to this, to the heart of the message today. Can you just like Elijah declare, from this day, ask for me, I will worship the God of Israel. I will serve this God of Israel, not money. And once you make that shift, you would see what would happen. When God blesses us, he adds no trouble to it. 